狼はその約束を守るが風に揺れることを、狼が走るというようになった。風にされたんだね。そう、そうじゃな。めでたしめでたし。ではなかったんじゃな。<笑>すまぬの、忘れとったわ。ラッチの名前はホロ。<笑>しばらくぶりにこの姿を撮ったがな。<笑>奇遇だな Hi there everyone, Lars back with another anime review and analysis brought to you by Camille's Harem. Not just a podcast by novice writers for novice writers, but also a YouTube channel by novice writers for novice writers. Because writing is an adventure, it's more fun with friends, and no, I am not being hyperbolic in any kind of way when I say that Spice and Wolf is the next Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Let me quickly explain right here. Just like with Full Metal Alchemist, there was an original anime which a attempted to adapt the manga. It was very popular for a time, but then kind of went off the rails. And though it is fondly remembered, it is nowhere near as good as the remake Brotherhood. We then have Spice and Wolf, which was a somewhat under budget telling、uh, adaptation of the light novel series Spice and Wolf. It was very much beloved when it came on out. It was really good. However, it did deviate from the manga, or I should say, from the light novels, and it was never completed. And people have been wanting this thing to come back, and it has come back. And has come back in style. Just like with Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, this anime has the proper budget for a good ad. For a good adaptation, it is properly adapted with no major deviations thus far from the source material. And Holo, for instance, is actually aged down the way that she ought to be. I know it's gonna be creepy for some people, but let's roll with it right here. And for those who know the light novels, they should be very excited because of the opening shot to the first episode, because it already lets you know that the studio intends. To finish the entire story. So, just like with Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, we get the whole thing. With the remake of Spice and Wolf, we are going to get the whole thing according to the light novels, and it is going to be exciting. Now, to get everyone caught up on what this show is about, for those who don't know, who haven't seen the original anime, who haven't read the light novels, Spice and Wolf tells the story of a traveling merchant, Kraft Lawrence, as he passes through this small farming community, Pazloe. There, he encounters Holo the Wise Wolf. Holo is a wolf goddess, or more like a very powerful spirit that people refer to as a goddess, who had made an agreement hundreds of years ago to help this town prosper by cultivating its wheat. And she has stayed there for generations. And by now, most people have forgotten that there was even an agreement made, and she's just a legend, and a legend that's beginning to die out as the Catholic Church is taking over the area. Well, she knows that people no longer view her as this benevolent goddess who has helped them out for generations, and she feels, you know what, it's time for me to just bamf on out of here. And lo and behold, Kraft Lawrence just happens to meet all of the supernatural requirements necessary for her to leave Pazloe, and the two of them go on an adventure together to rediscover her homeland far to the barbaric cold north. And along the way, The agreement is that if Kraft Lawrence will take her all the way up to the north, she will help him make as much money as possible using all of her godly abilities. So there you have it. That's the basic premise for the story. And actually, as I do my reviews and analyses for Spice and Wolf, I am not going to go episode by episode like I have with other shows. Instead, I am going to focus on specific arcs. The reason why I'm going to do that is because this story is very unique from many others. It runs similar to mysteries, to capers, where there is. A problem, a conundrum that must be solved, and it will be solved within two or three episodes. And actually, at the pacing that this show is going at already, you can expect that most of these capers or problems are going to be resolved within two to three episodes, as opposed to the original anime, which stretched it out way longer. And in my opinion, it's more beneficial to actually look at the specific arcs individually rather than break them down episode for episode because we will then be able to 
look at the valuable lessons that the story is trying to teach you. Because Spice and Wolf isn't just about Lawrence and Holo going up to the north. No, Spice and Wolf is here to teach you about economics. Every single caper, every single conundrum, every single side quest that these characters go on is going to be dictated by an element of the economy, whether that be trying to understand how the stock market works, the value of currency, or how you trade items contracts even there's an entire there's an entire arc all about contracts and why you should read the fine print and if that sounds really boring that's because usually that kind of stuff is unless you are a big nut for uh, economics and i will admit i'm definitely not that kind of a person in fact economics to me is black magic half the time but with spice and wolf this story does such a phenomenal job of taking sometimes hard to understand economic ideologies, occurrences, and practices, and wends them beautifully into this drama of a merchant and a wolf goddess traveling together. And it just, it makes tons of sense. It works out really, really well. So for those of you who haven't read the light novels, for those of you who haven't seen the original anime, let me then just give you then some understanding of this world and of the stories that we are about to encounter in this in this greater tale, and especially here with this first arc, because you were actually given a ton of very valuable information in this very first episode, and if you weren't paying attention, it's going to go over your head, and you might miss just how important and beautifully woven together the conclusion to the first arc is. So, some of the things that we need to understand right off the bat when it comes to the story of Spice and Wolf is that we are set in what is basically the early modern period. It should be the beginning of the early modern period, which means that the medieval times, the Dark Ages, are beginning to slide now into the rearview mirror. We are beginning to enter a more sophisticated and enlightened time in the world. We're not yet to the Renaissance, but you can see that we're kind of getting there. But one of the things that really marks the early modern period is that at this point, the Catholic Church and then pretty soon the Protestants will have swept the entirety of Europe. And a lot of the old pagan strongholds convert or fall to the missionary works or the crusades of the Catholic Church and later on also to the Protestants. So this is right before the last barbaric, the last paganist uh, strongholds fully fall to the Catholic Church. We are right on that cusp. And as so as a result, you actually see here in this episode that the church is very adamant about crushing pagan rituals and pagan beliefs. The, val the village of Pazloe has this long pagan tradition in part because of everything that Holo did for them and their farms. And now that the Catholic Church is firmly rooted in the area, they want all of that paganism done away with and the people's hearts and minds and their faith turned to God, to the Christian God. So people are turning away from Holo, but not only that, because of new technologies that are being invented or being pursued during the early modern period, farming is going to experience a little bit of a boom. And so this small little farm right, farming community right here, Pazloe, is beginning to prosper. But not only are they prospering because the church is here taking care of them and because of new farming techniques, but also because they now have a new lord. Their previous lord had overtaxed them. He had tried to squeeze the peasantry for all that they were worth. And yes, we still have the peasantry because we haven't yet been completely ravaged by the Black Plague. That is going to be one of the prerequisites, actually, to the Renaissance. So we haven't yet reached that horrible, murky bit of history, which means, yes, lots of peasants, lots of people absolutely tied to the land and squeezed for all of their labor and taxes. Beautiful, lovely taxes. Well... 
That lord, most likely because he squeezed his land too much, could not afford to pay his overlords. This is something that is often misunderstood when it comes to the nobility. The nobility would constantly be in flux because especially if lower lords could not meet the taxes requirements of their kings or their dukes and princes, they would be removed from their position and the new nobles would be elevated to take over their lands and then try to do better with those lands. Their previous lord has either been removed or died. But in either case, a new lord has now taken over this community, and rather than squeezing them for all that they're worth, no, he is trying to make Pesloe an economic boom town by bringing all of these new farming techniques to try to bring in more to try to cultivate more wheat and what he's trying to bring in by cultivating more wheat is he's trying to bring in trini silver coins now this is another very important world building element that is going to play a huge role not just for this arc but for future arcs as well Throughout Europe in the early modern period, you would still have people bartering, trading and bartering to get the goods that they need, but there were indeed coins in circulation, and those coins were highly coveted. Now, every single region, every single kingdom would have different coins that were minted by the nobility, and one of the things that would really boost up the economy and the reputation of various kingdoms was how pure the gold and the silver Silver was in their coins. One of the important things about Trini Silver coins, this is just light spoilers for the future, is that Trini Silver coins are high in silver content, meaning they are more pure, therefore they are worth more. And what we see here in this small farming community that had once been squeezed for everything that they were worth, nearly bled dry and destroyed because of taxes, 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 well, they now have a chest full of some of the highest quality silver coins in the region the Trini Silver Coins. This means that their lord is doing excellent business, but it's not just him, it is also the people here within this town. Specifically, we're talking about Yari, who is a farmer that has gained status within the community thanks to working with Lawrence and learning some tricks of the trade, has now become the chief negotiator for the selling of the town's wheat. So working together with his new lord, they've been bringing in Trini silver coins, and it just seems like they're like this a little farming community is now just on the cusp, is on the brink of just becoming something big, they could actually grow and become a proper town. That would be phenomenal. That's almost nearly unheard of for most farming communities back in the day. So congratulations to them. So that is some of the important world building details that you need to know here on the outset as we go on in. That we are in the early modern period. Catholic Church is beginning to sweep the land, remove all traces of paganism from all these different communities, which means in many cases that Holo and Lawrence are going to be a little bit on the run from the law. So we still have knights and the likes moving about, but we are entering a different era age. Also, remember, the quality of the coins is very important from region to region, showing how wealthy uh, any given community actually is. And I should also point out that Lawrence, as a traveling merchant, is nothing uncommon. You would have multiple traveling merchants and also traveling workmen. That was actually something that would be very, very popular at that time, where someone would travel around, show off their skills, and try to make a name for themselves in various towns and hope to be picked up by a master and then brought into the community and then become an established merchant, an established blacksmith, an established painter, what have you. Journeymen, as they are called, are quite are quite regular. And as we will learn about Lawrence, Lawrence is no longer an apprentice, but he is still very much a journeyman. He is trying to make a name for himself and earn enough money in order to properly establish himself within a community. Now, as far as the events of this episode go, 
It's really quick and simple. Lawrence is passing through Pazloa. He wants to speak to Yari, but Yari is going to be kind of indisposed because he has been chosen as per the rituals of the town to be the avatar of Holo the Wise Wolf because he happened to be the last person to harvest any grain. This is just part of the rituals that have been built up over hundreds of years, generations even, and people are going to move on a little bit from this now, especially as the Catholic Church is beginning to crack down on them. And so we see that Yari doesn't even really follow through with what's expected of him, where he's supposed to remain in a barn for an entire week and survive off of the donations and sacrifices of the village while everyone celebrates the end of the harvest and they get to keep holo for another year to ensure a plentiful harvest harvest next year. Well, Holo does have the magic of jumping and breaking her contract with the village if there is more wheat nearby. And so she jumps from the wheat of the fields into the wheat of Lawrence's cart. And this is important because Lawrence is actually intending to bring a sturdier uh, strand of wheat to other customers in hopes of making a fine bit of coin. That's going to be something for a little bit later. So she's now able to ride in the back of his cart. He discovers her as he's checking out why there's noises in the back of his cart, also to make sure that all of his goods are just fine and dandy because as a traveling merchant, he lives or dies by what is in his cart and its quality. He discovers this naked girl who then says, hey, I am a magical wolf. He says, prove it. She takes some wheat rather than blood, that's going to be important for later, and thus transforms, spooking Lawrence and sending him packing on back to the village where he then learns about how Yari has been working with their new lord to amass more wealth in order to raise up Pazloe. And Yari really wants to seal some sort of deal with Lawrence, but Lawrence has got other things that he needs to do. The furs, for instance, the pelts that he has in his cart need to go to a specific location on time before they spoil. So he can't really hang around. He's like, I'll, I'll be around next year. Uh, don't worry about it. Deals with wheat will always come around. It'll be totally cool and fine. Whatever. And this works out really well for him because now he can travel with Holo and make it on up to the north. And thus their adventure begins. So, when we get to the conclusion of the first arc, I will be back to discuss the characters, the character development, and the economics of this fantastic series. If you have no idea what this show is, I highly encourage that you check it out because it is so much fun. This is something that I've been waiting to return for over a decade. I didn't think we were going to get it, and now that we have it here, I am excited because there's so much to the story. And especially, again, the opening shot where he lets us know that the studio intends to complete the entire story. It's done now. You can read the whole thing in its light form novel in, in the in the light novels and uh, and get ahead of the anime and go ahead and do that if you want to do that, if you want to spoil yourself. But let me just tell you this. It's going to be fun. This is a great ride. If you haven't yet seen Spice and Wolf and you just want to be an anime only, strap on in because this is going to be one of the most educational rides of your life and you're going to love it because economics has never been so sexy. So with all that being said, that will do it here for this video. If you'd like to support what we do, then please check out the books that we've published. Links for them are in the description below. I would love to hear from you in the comments if you intend to watch Spice and Wolf. And if you have already, I would love to hear your thoughts on the story as it now begins anew with this remake. And was I being too hyperbolic by saying that this is the new Full Metal Alchemist? I really don't think so. And depending if it gets enough views, this could, I don't think it will be Full Metal Alchemist, let's be honest, it's one of the best anime ever made, but it could be very comparable, and I'd love to see that. But with all that being said, thank you so much for joining us on this incredible adventure that we call writing, and until the next video, y'all, tschüss. <laughs>